Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're in Idlewild at the relaxing yoga center known as Moonlight Mountain. This bed and breakfast establishment is owned by a husband and wife team of yoga instructors Kelly and Ginny. Serenity is the order of the day as this center is set in its own little rainforest with nature trails. Moonlight Mountain has a lot to offer and we'll show you just how much right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. Comfort for landowners. More leases are distributed to families in Lamy Road and Adelphi Estate. A Tobagonian writes her way to the top for the regional Eric Williams School Bags essay competition and a new postal addressing system to be implemented on this island. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24-hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. Because of hard times, I was feeling kind of useless. Went into the city, I bought an oven, and decided to open a little cake shop. I went into the office and I got a form, and the staff was very helpful, and they helped me make up the form and give me all different kind of you know information. And, and it was easy, very easy. I would say thanks to the business development unit for all the assistance that they are given to me. Redefining business protecting Tobago's heritage. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. We're at Moonlight Mountain in Idlewild, just outside Scarborough. Ginny has been teaching and practicing yoga for over 25 years, while her husband Kelly specializes in Thai massages. Whether it's yoga therapy, massages, reflexology, or life coaching, Moonlight Mountain caters to your all-round well-being. And if serenity is to Moonlight Mountain, then peace of mind is to land leases here in Tobago. Why are we saying this? Well, when you have a place to eat and sleep, that makes you happy. But that feeling quickly dissipates when you don't have any legal claim to the land you've built on. The reality is this is a very common problem for many Tobagonians. They don't have the deeds to the lands which some have lived on since they were born. But as Omadara Mills tells us, there's an ongoing effort to change this. This mother of four is Anne Trinidad, who's looking through the legal documents which she received for this land in Lamy Road, Argyle. She's been living on the land for about five years and like the other nine in this batch who received the deeds and titles to their property, she's now comforted knowing that it's legally hers. I am elated this afternoon to receive this lease. It has been a long and drawn out wait, so I'm thankful. Anthony Cape is another Lamy Road resident who's been living on state-owned land, which is part of the Roxborough estate for about 12 years. The idea is that um, whatever investment I'm going to get involved in, it would be, it would be wisely done. Um, with advice from my finance house, I guess I would be able to make wise decisions and go forward from there. The residents of Lamy Road were not the only ones who received deeds to their land recently. The initiative to have all persons on the Adelphi estate regularized is continuing, and at this time, four persons received their deeds. I know we can now go home and put it in a safe place and decide, okay, we'll do something, whether it's to the children, with the children, with the other siblings, wherever. But we want to say, and I think I'm speaking for everyone, that we will take care of this document that was given to us. Over the years, the THA has taken up the task of regularizing persons who have been squatting or renting on several parcels of state-owned lands with 99-year leases, which can be passed on to future generations or used to carry out financial transactions. We are making all the efforts necessary to complete the Adelphi estate 
and there are others in Tobago that we want to move to to try and meet those obligations that the THA has in terms of helping to satisfy the residents of Tobago with titles and tenorship to lands that uh, belong to the state. To date, over 100 persons on the state-owned Adelphia estate have been given legal tenure to their lands. For Lamy Road, a total of 44 persons will receive legal ownership of the land they've been living on for years. I'm Omdara Mills for Let's Talk to Begu. The goal of the national school curriculum is to have students progress from one level to the next seamlessly through productive and meaningful experiences. But the last curriculum for infants and standard one students had what's known as a one-subject approach, prompting the Education Ministry to review it. That review was completed last July, and today in its place is a new standard which does not limit the child in any way, but instead unleashes the student's creative potential. This new curriculum is about to be implemented in Tobago, and here are the details from Davia Chambers. We live in the 21st century. Therefore, the majority of things we do should reflect this, our education system not excluded. It's why there's reform of many teaching methods on the island, which encompasses removing the outdated curriculum for infant and standard one students. A new one has finally been implemented in Tobago, but before it reaches the classroom, teachers spent a week being trained to focus on students' skill development. It is significant because we need to prepare our children for the 21st century. This curriculum is focused, as is required in education at this point in time, on the building of skills in our children. It's no longer focused on which pieces of knowledge you need. We still have all of the critical knowledge, but more importantly, focused on skills. To adequately prepare the island's students for our changing world, teachers learned five significant aspects of education. Literacy, numeracy, integration of information communication technology, differentiated instruction, and assessment for learning. Changing our focus from just teaching to one test and a high stakes kind of test and drilling students for that test to building in a range of assessment types that all our children will be able to relate to and perform better at. And there are many advantages to this style of learning. Every child will find himself engaged, doing, not sitting at a desk, doing things with hands, with the entire body, activity, singing, moving, physical education, the whole range of it, which has to be to the benefit of the child. And as the teachers leave the training and enter their classrooms, support is still accessible. This and their newly acquired skills have made the journey ahead exciting. For one, we will no longer be teaching subject by subject. Um, well, I already have a theme I want to go with, which is communities. And we're going to start with looking at ourselves, looking at our families, the extended family, the community of Bonaccord, and doing projects at community base. The focus is to create students who can think critically and become innovators. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Out of 170 entrants in the Caribbean, one young lady, through her writing, showed that students in Tobago are capable of excelling in academics at the regional level. This Tobagonian showed that she can properly assess the successes and failures of her country and say what this means for Trinidad and Tobago going forward. It's time to find out which of our students wrote her way to the top of the region. The ever-envied status of being developed is not a destination, but a journey. So that the failures that we have experienced over our 50 years of decolonization are merely examples of our attempt to attain success. That's just a few of the words from the winning essay written by Sophia Moore of Bishop's High School. She's the winner of the 2012 Eric Williams School Bags Essay Competition. At the awards ceremony, Safia says that winning the competition is more than the prizes and the publicity. It serves as a reminder that as youth of this nation, this region, and the world, that we should let our voices be heard and grasp opportunities such as this essay competition to do so. 
She says that the competition allowed her to better understand the meaning of Eric Williams' statement that the future of the nation is in the school bags of our children. He conveyed that whatever we chose to fill our school bags with could potentially affect our future. Education, enthusiasm, and endurance are things that all persons should aspire to fill their school bags with. The principal of Bishop's High School, Claire Alexander Braffitt, says that Sophia is a gifted musician, strong debater, and leader who represents the school's vision of producing students of outstanding character and intellect. This young lady, who has consistently managed to balance the tension between listening respectfully to the advice of those who guide her, but challenging their established perspectives with insights of her own. Some of Sophia's other prizes include a monetary voucher and the publication of her essay in the CARICOM's newsletter, the Miami Herald newspaper's online edition, and U.S. Pelican magazine. The awards ceremony has been hosted by the THA in collaboration with the organizers and sponsors of the Eric Williams School Bags essay competition. I'm Omidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but still to come, Tobago gets the nod of approval as one of the best Caribbean destinations. Let's talk Tobago. Welcome back to Moonlight Mountain. Whether you've been doing yoga for years or you're just beginning, you can get one-on-one -on -one sessions or opt to practice as a group. But this yoga center is also an ideal getaway with three bedrooms, each with its own hammock on a balcony where you can take in the view of Scarborough. It's a view that allows you to see this island's progress over the years. And as both Trinidad and Tobago continue to strive for a higher standard of living, Titi Post has adopted an international standard of addressing. And in case you're wondering what postal addresses have to do with development, well, for starters, it takes the guesswork out of the process and minimizes your frustrations with the mail delivery system. The use of lamppost numbers, mile markers, lot numbers, corner of, and street addresses without a building number that are commonly used in addresses throughout the country will be eliminated. This is being done through the pursuit of a new international addressing standard, the S42 addressing standard. The S42 standard again improves the quality of addresses and it discontinues the use of some of our traditional addresses in Trinidad and Tobago. So all those misgivings about the efficiency of the country's mailing service should be a thing of the past. I'm sure some of you now have problems receiving a mail, not receiving it on time, receiving the wrong mail, having to send it back. And the S42 standard with proper addressing, um, proper addressing systems should eliminate these problems that we face from day to day in the postal delivery service. Having this new system obviously also means improved signage, which is a plus for the island. The tourism industry, which is a major part of your main, main state of Tobago, will also see benefits as visitors will find it much easier to locate points of interest and get around the island, being aided by improved street signage and the proper numbering of buildings. The S42 addressing standard is an internationally recognized and accepted addressing standard developed by the Universal Postal Union, 
the United Nations Agency that provides a forum for cooperation between postal administrations worldwide. TT Post is collaborating with the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities to effectively implement the new addressing standard. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. To some, Tobago is small and insignificant, but the strategic location of this island caused colonial powers to fight for its control throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. Twelve Dutch and four French ships sank during the 1677 Battle of Scarborough Harbor, burying cultural artifacts which researchers say have the potential to greatly expand our understanding of this decisive period in Tobagonian, Caribbean and world history. But first, they need to rescue the material from the Scarborough Harbor. These plans are coming to fruition, beginning with a base for the research and preservation of the island's marine treasures. Here's an update from Keshawn Wilson. This Atlantic side of Tobago is known as Rockley Bay. As seen from Fort George, it is now calm and blue, but during the 17th century, it was an area where many battles were fought and thousands died. From that, there are numerous underwater remains, particularly those from the 1677 battles fought between the Dutch and the French. The THA understands the importance of this marine archaeological site to the economic, academic and cultural growth of the island. And since 2007, they've partnered with a team from the University of Connecticut to recover and preserve the artifacts. The project has four phases and to date, the first phase of the project has been completed. That is the construction of an appropriate conservation facility at the Scarborough Port so that when the artifacts are brought up from the Scarborough Harbour, they can be treated, preserved and properly catalogued. The other phases of the project will include the exhibition of the materials at the Fort King George Museum. The project will stimulate the growth, the archaeology and heritage tourism niche market, which will help to push the island's tourism sector forward. It's hoped that this project will be a model for the rest of the Caribbean in the recovery, research and conservation of marine artifacts since the conservation facilities will in the future be able to handle many submerged cultural heritage sites around the region. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The Caribbean is known for its serene setting, almost perfect weather and amazing biodiversity. The region's natural beauty continues to lure travelers from all around the world. But let's be honest, everyone believes their island offers something unique, special and distinct from the rest. So rather than leave it up to marketing officials, a U.S. publication decided to get the views of unpaid readers. 10 Best, a division of USA Today Travel, allowed their readers to vote for four weeks. And when the results came in, Tobago made the cut. My sweet island, Tobago, I love you. Tobago, a jewel in the Caribbean crown. 26 miles long with unspoiled beaches, a laid back atmosphere, but an island of rich history and culture. It's probably these reasons and others that Tobago was chosen to be in the 20 favorite Caribbean islands selected by the experts at 10 Best of USA Today's travel segment and then a nominee in the Reader's Choice Award contest for Best Caribbean Island. And after all this, Tobago emerged among the top 10 best Caribbean destinations for this year, topping countries like Jamaica and St. Lucia. I think it will put us more on the map. It would make people out there more aware that there exists an island called Tobago. And I believe definitely that a lot of visitors, we are going to get additional visitors coming. To this is my second time here and I'm working in a cruise line. Uh, with the beautiful Pacific Princess. So this is my second time, I said before, and I'm very proud to be here. It's a beautiful green island, I have to say. It's a delightful place from what I've seen so far. I've only been here a short time, but I'm very happy for you, and perhaps that will stimulate tourism here. Yes, that's very good news, for the, especially for the people in the tourism industry. And I think that the government should really make it a number one priority. It's a beautiful island. I'm very impressed with it. The people are very friendly and open, very welcoming. So I'm not surprised it's gotten such good reviews. did, but I think that's very creditable for what it could be. And uh, as I say, I've just gotten here, but it certainly seems like a very fun place to be. And 
beautiful place. Huh? And I think it's one of the nicest, cleanest places that we have been to. It is really beautiful. You've got a lot to offer here. And the people are very friendly. The other nine countries making the top 10 list are Puerto Rico, Curaçao, Dominica, St. Martin, St. Martin, Grenada, Barbados, Bonnier, St. John, and Anguilla. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but stay with us for details about a quiet revolution that's taking place with cassava in Tobago. My name is Gail Abraham. I am the owner of Simple Homes, a reality located at 31 Bethesda Street, Plymouth. Well, a friend at church made an open request on anybody with small businesses who needed help to see her after church. So I took up on the challenge. Instead of three to four days on a, on a large property, it's like one day now. Not even a full day, half day. It was very educational for me. Thanks almighty God, thanks to the BDU. Redefining business, protecting Tobago's heritage. Thanks for staying with us here on Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at Moonlight Mountain and Idlewild. Another striking feature you'll find here is the kitchen garden where you can pick fresh herbs, seasonings and even fruits. Perfect for preparing a meal or two in the kitchen of this lovely studio apartment that's close to the pool. We're not sure you can get cassava here, but this woody shrub is widely available in other parts of Tobago and is a major source of carbs. But there are those who believe this root crop has even more potential, that it can be used to develop food and nutrition security and generate income for many. It's going to take that kind of vision to see cassava in a different light, as a product that can be marketed to persons inside and outside of Tobago. Omadara Mills has the story on a strategic planning session done to create a more sustainable cassava industry. Kurma, farine and the punch are not the only products which can be made from cassava. Here at this consultation, farmers, agricultural technicians and agro-processors came together to begin forecasting and exploring more options which will make the cassava industry a more viable one for Tobago. We also want to improve the efficiency of the processing because we're not just looking at the fresh product or the raw material, we're looking at the processing aspect of it and we have to make those uh, processes as efficient as possible. But improving the production of the crop is not all. At the seminar, persons are asked to examine all the options as it relates to the branding and the marketing of the cassava products. There must be a niche for it. It can't be farine like everybody else farine. If it turns out to be a farine as part of a cereal mix that includes sesame seed. And persons are seeing where market is being created not only for the fresh cassava product. I was very proud as a Tobagonian in Guyana in October last year where we carried some of the products, cassava products, processed products, we carried some kurma and pomme de creme or cassava puncha creme and fruitcake and we got rave, ravens, good reviews on those products. They were nicely labelled and so on and we had some Europeans there and they were amazed. The meeting of the agricultural stakeholders was facilitated by CADI and the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment as the division seeks to recreate a cassava industry which is in sync with Tobago's agricultural development. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And Omadara has been tracking all things food related. This time she tells us a little more about the food we order at restaurants, hotels and fast food outlets. You may assume that persons cooking and serving your favorite meals are knowledgeable and competent in handling your food properly, right? Yes, and that's because they have a food badge. And we're about to find out the process for getting those badges and what has changed to better serve you. A chicken sandwich with fries at a local restaurant sounds enticing. As a customer, you will be eating comfortably knowing that your food is prepared using the safest food safety guidelines. That's because when cooks, chefs and bakers get their food badge from the local public health department, they're not just getting a permit allowing them to prepare and offer food for sale to the public. 
Firstly, it is required by law that as a food handler, you must be registered. And as proof of your registration, the food badge is proof that you are a registered food handler. Also, it's not just about getting a food badge. There's also a health education aspect to it. So, part, so when you get the food badge, you are given guidelines as to proper food handling practices. The Acting Public Health Inspector 2, Dean Jack, tells of some of the issues which the applicants are educated on. We talk about appropriate dress in the workplace or in the food establishment in the preparation area. We talk about hand washing. We talk about cleaning of the utensils, the countertops, etc. Use of clean water, use of wholesome ingredients. And for those who don't go through this process of acquiring their food badges, there are consequences, especially for the consumer. There would be compromises in time, temperature, storage of food, the personal hygiene aspect of it. They would not wash their hands properly, the correct times to wash hands and what have you. For 2014, there's a new system for acquiring your food badge. Before going to the public health department with a medical from a medical practitioner, two passport size photos, one form of identification and $20 for processing, persons are asked to call the number 639-1433 and schedule an appointment. The lecture session and the processing of the food badge will be done on Thursdays at the Old Scarborough Health Centre. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. Tobago has been pushing for internal self-government for a very long time. The island has been trying to get this issue on the legislative agenda of the parliament, but so far these efforts have borne little success. So as 2013 came to a close, the chief secretary decided to take a new approach, to get all the political parties on the island together to come up with a plan to speak with one voice. It was the first in a series of meetings, and as they wrapped up the inaugural talks, everyone agreed that this approach was in the best interest of Tobagonians. So today we're asking, how do you feel about the Chief Secretary's initiative to bring all Tobago-based political parties together in pursuit of autonomy for the island? This is what you said. I feel as a good thing because it's something that we were clamoring for a very long time. And I believe that Tobago is under good hands and I believe this is something that should pursue it. It makes sense because, you know, unity is strength and that what we really need right now, you know, coming together and, you know, deciding where is what. It's a very good, very, very good thing. But um, once they can get along because, you know, everybody have different opinion about things. But once they get along with, it, with, with, with getting together and getting Tobago off it, where they have it. It's a very good thing. It's not a bad idea because even the word of God recommends that unity. You know, if, if people could unite, you get a better, a better, what would you use? You get a better, yes, a better results of things. If we should just come together, bring our best ideas to the fore to ensure that Tobago gets its just due as it is accorded, then all will be well. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Colleen Holden. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. As we go, we leave you now with some final scenes from Moonlight Mountain. Thank you.